La siguiente ponencia será a cargo de Takis Potopoulos. Lleva por título La democracia inclusiva como proyecto político por una nueva síntesis libertaria, fundamentos y propuestas de estructura social y transición. Takis Fotopoulos es eh, filósofo político, ha sido profesor de la Universidad de North London, en Londres, eh, es también editor de la revista The International Journal of Inclusive Democracy, eh, es autor del libro Towards an Inclusive Democracy, que tiene ediciones en varios idiomas, incluyendo en español Hacia una democracia inclusiva, editado en Montevideo, eh, es columnista en un diario griego, el Estereotipia, I guess. <risa> eh, y bueno, tiene numerosos artículos y su último libro, publicado el año pasado por la editorial de International Journal, Journal of Inclusive Democracy, es The Pink Revolution in Iran and the Left. Eh, <risa> Gracias. Uh... I would like first to uh, say how deeply honored I feel to speak in Barcelona and in particular in CNT, uh, which I think are major symbols of the libertarian struggle. And um, in a sense, I feel at the same time very sorry because um, although uh, libertarianism in the past century had played a very important role in the general struggle for uh, free society. Uh, today, we see the decay, not only of the libertarian movement, but also of the uh, socialist movement, and I mean the statist socialist movement. Uh, you remember since the first international, there was a major division between uh, statist socialist Marx and uh, libertarian socialist Bakunin, <coughs> and this division continued in the 20th century. And uh, as we know, uh, starting with the Soviet Revolution, we had the rise of state socialism in the form of actually existing socialism, as it was called. And then uh, after the Second World War, we had the uh, rise of the second version of social state, social democracy. And in the last uh, what, uh, 30, 35 years, we noticed the full collapse of uh, state socialism in the form of actually existing socialism. And at the same time, uh, the social democracy, which was already in decay since the uh, mid 70s about, uh, by now has collapsed effectively. That is, there are parties called social de uh, democratic parties which are still in power, but in fact they do not have any relationship to what social democracy used to be, even according to their own declarations. That is, we better call these parties social liberal parties because in fact they are some sort of mix between a socialist and a liberal party. And in effect, <clears throat> the social democratic parties implement exactly the same kind of neoliberal policies that supposedly conservative parties do. That's why you see all this uh, uh, passivity of, uh, uh, with respect to the electoral process going on at the moment, that is, people do not bother in any country, uh, in Britain or in uh, the United States or in Europe, whether they vote one party or another, because they know exactly the same policies are going to be followed. So <clears throat> we have on the one hand the collapse, the total collapse of actually existing socialism. Then we have the effective collapse of social democracy. And paradoxically enough, although we could expect that since in a sense Bakunin proved to be right since I think the 1870s, because he predicted that state is socialism would become a totalitarian system and would eventually collapse. So, although, in a sense, libertarianism, left libertarianism, of course, uh, was uh, justified, in effect, today, we don't see the corresponding rise of the libertarian movement. Instead, we see that major libertarian movements all over the world have become postmodernist, reformist, uh, irrational type of movements, 
there are, of course, still some uh, anarchist movements around, and uh, anarcho-syndicalist movements, but <coughs> they do not have, in any sense, uh, any sort of power which is comparable to what was going on before the Second World War, and particularly in Spain, where we have the major uh, outburst of uh, libertarian, libertarian in theory and in practice, particularly in practice. So how we can explain this? And at the same time, this is the, par the big paradox, the systems crisis, the capitalist system, if you like, crisis, has become deeper than ever before. In other words, now we have not only the biggest economic crisis since uh, the mid-20s, uh, 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 1920s, I mean, and 1930s, uh, not only we have the deepest economic crisis, but this is complemented by a whole series of other crises at other social levels. We have, first of all, the ecological crisis, <coughs> which is now threatening even life itself on the planet. We have then a very deep um, social crisis in the sense that uh, states all over the world build more and more, power, uh, more powerful prisons in order to imprison and control the significant part of the population. The rest of the population is controlled through the abuse of drugs, the massive abuse of drugs. Uh, so we have an explosion uh, in uh, uh, social phenomena which demonstrate a very serious social crisis. Uh, and then we have the crisis in politics. That is, nobody today uh, believes actually what professional politicians say. If they believe for one, if they vote for one party or another, it's simply the middle classes basically that take part in the electoral process because they do see some difference between the one party and the other. A difference in whether one party is going to reduce more than taxes than the other and so on but particularly lower income groups, working class and so on, <coughs> do not take part in the electoral process. Either they abstain uh, or they don't give a damn about it. Now, uh, politicians themselves know about it and they discuss all the time about the crisis in politics. So, the logical question that arises is, why this crisis? That's the first question. The second question is, what we can do about it, not only about the crisis, about gen but generally about society. Can we create a different sort of society which would not lead to the sort of crisis, the multidimensional crisis we face at the moment? And the third logical question is how we move to such a society, how we move from here to there. But in fact, these three questions are the questions that constitute any political project, in particular the systemic political project, this is how it is defined. It is defined as a comprehensive polit uh, political program that belongs, of course, to the historical traditions of the left and which attempts to give answer to the three questions I mentioned. But you may uh, ask the question, give an answer on what basis? And here, of course, start the division. That is, in the past, there used to be an interpret. There, there are two basic ways in which people try to give an answer to this question. How we decide how to analyze the society <coughs> and how to uh, produce or propose proposals about a new society and how to move to the new society. Marxist and uh, others in the state is socialist come, try to give answers to these questions on the basis of some laws or tendencies in uh, historical development, historical material and so on, try to give answers to all these questions on the basis of some sort of uh, economic laws that we can use in order to explain reality, to explain the past and to explain uh, what is needed or what is going to happen anyway because of the working of these laws that will lead us to a new society. 
But it's not only Marxists, even on the libertarian front, we do have at the moment, for example, uh, social ecology, libertarian municipalism, uh, who try to do something similar. That is, they try to justify a future society on the basis not of social or historical laws, but on the basis of natural laws. That is, uh, Murray Books is uh, well known for this term. <coughs> he tried exactly to show how on the basis of natural evolution some sort of directiveness is created which would lead us to a free society. Uh, that's one side, uh, that's one count, if we like, to how uh, we can give answers to these questions. Another camp tries to give answers on these questions on a kind of subjectivist side or subjectivist uh, base. And on this, of course, uh, uh, we can say that they may be influenced by the modern, uh, the postmodern uh, uh, trend that at the moment is uh, prevailing, especially in intellectual side. Now, this camp tries to give answers to all these questions uh, on the basis of uh, a cultural revolution that uh, would happen uh, if we persuade people about uh, certain things. For example, uh, people in the degrowth movement suggest something like this. Others argue that uh, we can simply design a new form of society on the basis of an intellectual vision of what a new society should be on the basis of certain values that uh, he or she selects arbitrarily. That is, uh, okay, there may be some uh, values around, but uh, of course uh, the question is whether we can just choose the value we like <coughs> and then uh, on the basis of these values design a new society. Um,